Thank you for joining my talk. I guess some of you are having night time and some of you are having day time. But again, thank you for joining in. I would like to thank the DEF CON Red Team Village for providing me the opportunity to speak on the subject, which is from discovery to disclosure. So I do the cybersecurity stuff for a financial institution here in Pakistan. And when I'm done with my official responsibilities, I do the security researching, which is one of my hobby. Before the information security career, I used to develop mobile applications, web applications, and vice versa. Mobile applications and IoT industry had been really fascinating and I look forward to learn more about them as they are one of the growing industries and with the, grow with, with the stuff that is growing, it also has vulnerabilities or bugs or risk around it. Today my focus of talk would be Android application and their controls. Why Android applications? Because commonly used by the people around for the ease of access. So when you are developing mobile applications, let's say an iOS or an Android, you are required to integrate API because that helps you to fetch the dynamic data or the data that is stored in the database. So with the help of API, which is actually a bridge between a database and an application, you are able to perform your operations more smoothly and easily. Let's talk about some mobile application security breaches that happened earlier. One of them was Zigna that faced a data breach for around 200 million customers. The British Airways recently, uh, a year back, faced a huge uh, fine due to the data breach. And uh, there was this health application which used to suggest the weight or the calories you were taking it. So let's say you need to take you need you need to record the calories you have taken in for the dinner or for the lunch. It would predict the weight um, for you, so you can maintain it more easily. And in the data breach. 150 million accounts were affected and the data is still out there. This year, there was a security misconfiguration in Firebase databases which allowed the malicious actors or the users that could pass a specific and a simple parameter would allow them to look into the whole database or the whole data into the database. With the passage of time, the vulnerabilities of Android applications or the Android have been increasing year by year. So let's say in 2009, we had five vulnerabilities. And when we think of when we see 2016 and onwards, we have a large amount of vulnerabilities in Android and Android applications. So how did I discover vulnerabilities in one of the application I was looking into? So this specific application had around 1.5 million of downloads on the App Store with a great amount of reputation. They had been providing premium services to their customers, to their premium customers. So let's say you need to modify the notification, the time of the notification and customize the notification for the premium users for if you are one of them, that would be very easy for you. If you want to send greeting cards or cards with subject to a specific occasion, you could have easily do that by going to the specific function and generating a specific greeting card or, occasion, or the occasion card and write down whatever stuff you want to. So, While looking into the application further through a technical 
perspective, I found the application was using Firebase for the data storage. And they were using Google, Google Cloud Platform for their dynamic stuff, or let's say the stuff they wanted to host. And as well as the Google Identity Toolkit, let's say if you are a user, you want to register on this platform, all of the identity and access management were handled by the relying party, which is also known as Google Identity Toolkit. So this area had really fascinated me and I decided to look more into this perspective. So when I went into the Google Identity Toolkit, uh, there were a lot of functions uh, that were visible in their documentation. I went to their whole documentation one by one and tried and tried every uh, function on this application and tried to find out which of the functions are enabled by this application and which of them are disabled. So one of the function which says get account info was really fascinating for me and really interesting for me. So let's say I wanted to find details for an account if it is registered on the platform or if it is not registered on the platform. This specific function was able to return the details for a specific account or for a specific email address or for a, num or for a number if known. So what I did is I searched for the organization emails and one of them was uh, the no reply email that was not registered and was a, and I found that to be available for the sign up. I signed up to that email address. Again, it wasn't very, it wasn't sending a verification token to the email address and allowed the users to log in directly to the application. So I signed up through this email address and I was logged in as a corporate user with the same privileges uh, a corporate user would have. So in the second atta attacking uh, scenario, uh, the API, as we discussed about the API security, this API was actually using local, uh, local ID, which was been again, uh, part of the Google Identity Toolkit. Uh, the API was providing the local ID along with the username. So what I did was uh, I tried to replace the local ID one with the local ID two and the username uh, respectively. And my request was submitted and was uh, requested was approved and respond. And I, I got a response to that request successfully. So that means I can take over an account or I can post anything from a specific account by using the local ID and the username if known. So in the third attacking scenario, uh, the API, uh, the marketing API was used by the APK. So while reverse engineering the APK, I found this specific marketing API and then when I Googled that marketing API, I discovered the domains, the subdomains that application were using it. So that increased my attacking surface for against that organization in a more um, broader perspective. And then I was able to access one of their internal portals, uh, which was you know used for the support perspective. Now I had found everything and uh, found all of the vulnerabilities in this specific application. It was time to disclose it responsibly to the organization. So I reached out to their platform, their support platform. Again, I knew the uh, internal portal they were using. So I reached out there to their customer support and requested them to look into the vulnerabilities, but I just didn't submit those vulnerabilities on a public platform, rather ask them for the email address or uh, the support platform where I can post these vulnerabilities uh, in a very secure way. And then they uh, invited me to another platform 
I submitted all the vulnerabilities, all the bugs to that platform. Uh, I received the response from an engineering from the from the engineering team. Uh, again, that take a lot of time. That that uh, I guess took around a month. But again, a response, a such a response, a positive response from such organization was really appreciating. So I got this email from their head of platform engineering. And uh, this was an unexpected moment for me because I wasn't expecting any kind of uh, monetary support or any kind of uh, mon monetary benefit uh, in response to the bugs that I submitted. So I was really kind enough to their platform engineering uh, team and their head of platform engineering for considering the vulnerabilities and acknowledging my uh, acknowledging my efforts. So what is the conclusion of all of this exercise or all of the, I mean, uh, the effort that we had invested? So when you are disclosing vulnerabilities to an organization, you should act responsibly. So let's say you are disclosing vulnerability uh, to an organization that doesn't have any vulnerability disclosing program or coordinated vulnerability disclosure program. You look for their engineering teams, their development teams. Uh, you can approach them uh, in a very respectful manner and provide as much as detail as you can. Also respect the privacy. So let's say if you found out a vulnerability that is around insecure uh, direct object reference or that revolves around insecure ways of accessing data. What you can do is create two accounts for yourself and then you can play with your both of the accounts and see if any of this has any vulnerability or bugs in it and then you can submit that by claiming both of the accounts been used by you. Again, play within the boundaries. Uh, as discussed earlier uh, in, uh, in my talk, there are certain boundaries and there are certain responsibilities that uh, lies on the shoulder of the information security researcher. So look through these boundaries and act responsibly. And then again, patience because that's what is needed the most. So there have been certain vulnerability disclosure programs uh, out in on the internet. Uh, yes, we have, has a really cool plugin for the Google Chrome, I guess, and for the Mozilla Firefox, you can integrate that. And when you are visiting a, a website or an application, uh, you can get the uh, details for the vulnerability disclosure program. And the, even though if they are not available on these platforms, you can approach them to their email address they have specified in their uh, usual security.txt folder. There are a lot of bug bounty platforms uh, which support the vulnerability disclosure or the coordinated vulnerability disclosure programs. So you can approach these platforms as well and uh, submit your vulnerabilities in an efficient way. And then again, as I discussed, uh, the development or engineering department because they are the one who are developing the applications and they know the stuff. With that, I would like to thank everyone uh, again for joining in. Stay safe uh, and hack the planet more responsibly. I'm, I'll be available around the, around the Discord Red Team channel. So if you have any questions, please drop them in or you have my email address and Twitter account, the handler. So you can share your concerns or the email or I mean, you can share your concerns and your questions over the Twitter or Discord or whatever medium you would like to. Thank you so much. Goodbye.